ain't never going to be no peace on earth if all the small people keep trying to act like big people and the big people keep trying to act like God. Here's a look at the new Sideshow Collectibles Luke Cage six scale figure. He's got skin like steel and muscles to match. Luke Cage is currently available over on Sideshow Collectibles. And a big thank you to Sideshow for providing this sample. To get this review started, we're going to take the tape measure and we're going to put it to the very top of Luke Cage's head and stopping it right there. There we go. From the bottom of his feet to the very top of his head, the figure of Luke Cage stands at 11.8 inches in height, which works out in centimeters. Let me go ahead and do that right now for you. 30.2 30.2 centimeters tall. I must say for the display stand, I quite rather like it. It's the same hexagonal display base that we've seen with many of Sideshow's releases. Of course, they print the top differently depending on which character comes included with it. Um, here we've got a nice, very deliberately not intended to be a realistic looking terrain. Kind of looks like a, kind of like a little co cracked concrete roadway or maybe something back in the alleyway here. But I like that what they've done here is they've deliberately made it something that it would have almost been screenshotted from a panel in a comic book. It's got all those neat little cracks and little rubble, little pebbles and stuff like that. And then you've got Luke Cage here for higher signs, some of which are facing upside down, some of which are facing right side up. It's again, a nice little, a nice little corresponding complementary display base. It's not overly competing with the figure, but it has something of course to do with the figure. And I like again, the fact that they went with a not a realistic look, but something again that looks like it was taken from a comic book instead. To support the figure, it does have the supporting uh, crotch cradle in which the figure can just stand perched on top of. Um, these are the same neck adjusted neck cradles that we've seen with all the sideshow releases as well. Some of which you've also seen the additional holes here. I want to make sure, of course, he wasn't going to drop. Some of the additional holes here that have made then use with other figures such as the Sideshow Deadpool, which also carried and used some of these little holes. Even though these holes aren't going to come into play when it comes to displaying Luke Cage, at the very least, I like again that the display stand, the choice of display stand that they went with for Luke Cage here. Normally, this section right here would then be saved for the accessories, but we're not going to look at the accessories just yet. This is such a good looking figure that we want to really focus efforts on looking at the figure first and foremost, and then we'll trail off and look at all the accessories that come included with him. Luke Cage, one of his looks, one of other looks we'll incorporate later, but one of his primary looks, if you want to display the figure, is his very tight yellow shirt. It's not simply just a regular shirt. You can see that they've added some additional, almost looks like rubberized panel lines that they've added down to the the back section here, forming off in the shape of a Y. And then they've also got almost lightning bolt shapes running down the sides on either sides of the seam line, 
running right down the middle. The shirt, like I said, sits rather tight on the figure, tight enough as well that you can make out all the musculature on his torso without actually removing the shirt. You can feel a set of abdomen muscles, you can feel the pectoral muscles. Again, like if you wanted to lift up the shirt, the reason why I just didn't want to do that is simply just for the sake that it would be a difficult feat to put it then back in place. But again, it's got some nice, again, some nice texturing to it. If you want a fully shaped Luke Cage, this one, def this figure definitely hits all those marks. Um, one of which also hits its marks is the Luke Cage belt buckle, a familiar sight with many of the incarnations of Luke Cage here. Now this is a plastic belt buckle that's on the front of a full leather strap. On the side there he's got a pants which don't appear to have working pockets, seamed kind of in a way that they're different from just regular, almost regular denim pants. They look almost like they're a very dark denim pant. And then as we work our way further down, Luke Cage also has a pair of boots. I like that this is a small little added detail, but I like that they added this silver band on the back of its tread. We flip the feet upside down and a fully realized tread on, on the undersides of Luke Cage's shoes here. You know, in fact, even the more I look at this shirt, I'm actually thinking that the shirt rides really low pulling the shirt out, trying to remove it out. I'm wondering if it's actually strapped all the way around. So again, for the risk of stretching the shirt out of shape, I'm certainly just gonna leave it as is. Now, having a look at the head sculpt for Luke Cage, I quite like this head sculpt. Could they have potentially given us a secondary head sculpt? Of course, I think I would have loved a little bit of a grimacing face sculpt on this one as well, but this one utilizes the same sort of plunger socket that we've seen with many of the Sideshow releases. Enough covering these on this channel, I've learned to actually appreciate this ball joint that they utilize here. It does make things a lot easier when it comes to taking the heads off. You're not always having to force and take the head off of a regular circular ball joint. I really wish that more companies could incorporate this sort of rubber Kind of again this rubber flat cap over top of their existing ball joint it really does make changing the heads out even though this one do does technically not come with an extra additional head but certainly does make taking the head off a whole lot easier yes i do like the expression and stern look that they've given luke cage's head it did seem like the head was a little long but then proportionately if you look at it to the rest of the figure it seems like it's the right size uh, it does have some great paint job to it, paint work to it. Again, they've added the paint there around the areas around his eyes. It's a little bit, of course, of a darker complexion. But you can see that there's a slight, it seems like there's a slight lighter shade being used around the cheek areas and around the areas around the eyes. It seems like this section, if I can just show you right here, this section up the top here, seems a little bit darker as well as the sides seem a little bit darker love the expression though like i said on his face they could have given us maybe potentially two various head sculpts one which of course him showing his teeth and then one of the just regular sterner look that we're looking at right here love the additional additions of the veins that they've added to the sides of the temple again really happy with this head sculpt quite a bit now one of the other looks that they give you for luke cage is his leather jacket the leather jacket does have a faux leather look to it and the interior does have some additional padding. Actually, when you do get the figure out of packaging, it's defaulted with the jacket on. I've simply just taken it off, and I'm kind of really sitting here asking myself, inside, of course, I can then vocalize it loudly to you guys, I'm curious as to which route I'm going. I really do like the traditional yellow shirt Luke Cage, of course, with all of his jewelry and uh, necklaces we will look at in a second. But he does look quite good, I have to admit, also in his leather jacket. We'll go ahead and put that on the figure now. While you don't necessarily have to take the head off, I would advise it'd be a much easier feat if you take the hands off. With these also being sideshow releases, all of the hands also come included with their own supplied pegs. It's not a case where, like Hot Toys, you use one set of pegs, sometimes with an additional set provided, and you just have to keep popping the hands out, sometimes with pliers. Uh, sideshows make it much easier that, like I said, all the hands do include their own pegs. So, much like how you normally put a jacket on, you're going to bring the arms back, 
and we are going to start on, start on one side. Bring the sleeve all the way through until eventually we come across the socket and then we can go ahead and put the hand in there. We'll do the same thing on the other side. Bring the arm up. It's always usually a, a harder problem getting this secondary arm in place. And then we just slide that in place, slide the arm through, slide the arm through the sleeve, I should say. And then we just want to bring that forward. Now we can go ahead and take the hands once again. Something I do want to mention to you guys as well. My, my Luke cage, the one that we're looking at right here, like I said, did come with the jacket already on. One thing though I did have a struggle with was when I was trying to bend the arms, the elbows that is, I couldn't find the joint. It just, I couldn't find it. So what I did do was I took the jacket off, located where the joint was, which actually was facing the opposite way, turned the arm to the proper direction so that the arms would then bend this way, and then I put the jacket back on. If you do get this figure, if you're lucky enough to pick this figure up for yourself, I would probably advise if you do feel like there's a resistance to bending the arm, I would suggest taking the jacket off, like I just suggested, finding where that hinge joint is located on the elbow, rotate the arm, get that all corrected, and then put the jacket back on if this is the look that you're wanting to go with. Now, I'm not necessarily saying that this has to come for this specific look, but to come included also with Luke Cage, he gets himself a black toque, a black hat. And for this look, let's just say if we want to put this on his head, it's a slightly tighter fit, but you just want to stretch it over top of his head. Just bring it down. I like to bring it just past its ears. And then once it's in place, don't worry. I know the rim isn't necessarily lined up here. Just bring that all the way down. And then once that's in place, then you can bring the rim of the hat up. Just get that all corrected. And again, you can either bring that above the ears or you can leave it over the ears if you'd like. And then just correct, there we go, correct the rim on the other side there as well. And you've got this look for Luke Cage. And again, additionally to that, one of the other things that you can display the figure with, it's not to say that you, you could take the jacket off and display him with the toque that way, but one of the other accessories he comes included with is a pair of black shaded glasses. Now I can't stress this enough. These are made of a very thin plastic. Some of the thinnest plastic that I've seen with uh, glasses. So when you are putting this on the figure, be very, very careful. We're gonna grab the figure here and we're just gonna, just draping it over top of his nose. There we go. And just then bring it above his ears. I don't like doing this necessarily as much with the hat in place, but I would suggest if you are going to be going with this specific look for Luke Cage, I would probably suggest putting the glasses on after you put the toque on. Because if you put the toque on, of course, once the glasses are already in place, you run the risk of accidentally clipping the sides. And being that this is already made of a very thin plastic, the last thing you want to do is have those break. Now, this look is fine and good, but for me specifically, I think I would likely display Luke Cage without the jacket and just his traditional yellow shirt. To go along with that, here are some additional accessories that come included with the figure. I love this. And of course, many people who think of Luke Cage generally think this necklace as well. The very bold, very blinged Cage necklace, which appears to be on a metal chain. I like that. It does have, of course, the look of gold to it, golding and banding itself around what looks to be diamonds making up the cage interior. Now, this is something that isn't easy to fit over his head, so I would suggest taking the head off of Luke Cage and then fitting this over top of his neck, putting the head back on to display the figure with the necklace. If that wasn't enough, he also comes included with a silver necklace. And again, this one does feel like it is metal, smaller links and this one is actually a lot easier to put over top of his head. You don't really even necessarily have to take the head off to accomplish that. Completing what I believe is the definitive look for Luke Cage, he also comes included with his silver gauntlet bracelets. Now these would of course be very much concealed if you have him wearing the jacket currently, but once you take the jacket off, you're just going to take the hands off their sockets, slide those onto the forearms, and then revisit the hands. 
And seeing as we were speaking of hands, Luke Cage does come with a series of interchangeable hands. He comes technically with a total of seven. Now, of course, you're probably going to be displaying the figure at some point with two hands already in their sockets. So we'll look at the ones that we're currently not displaying him with. He comes with a pair of grabbing, grabbing, gripping hands, I suppose. Um, again, there's not really much that you could display the figure with, but it is neat that if you want to just have him kind of, you know, grabbing the air, sort of angry and aggressive, these would be a great pair of hands for those. I guess in some ways, something that we will talk about also in a second, these are also good hands for if you just want to be draping the larger chain over top of them. We'll talk about those in a second. Speaking of draping the hands, he also comes with this hand here, which as best as I could think of, it's best for supporting the chains. It's just for the chain to drape over top of his hand. There really doesn't seem like any other reasoning for why this hand would be included other than what I just mentioned. It does seem like there's a permanent sort of groove that's been embedded into the flesh there of his hand. Whether that actually be the case for simply just lining up the chain, or if that's intended for something else, Luke Cage doesn't really come with any other accessories than the ones we've already looked at. Last, but certainly not least, of course, excluding the gripped hands, the closed fisted hands. He also comes with a pair of gripping hands suited for holding specifically the chains in his hand. You can either hold one chain or one hand could be holding the chain, or you can have him holding both chains gripping in his hands. He does also come with those as well. Now again, something that I had mentioned too, you'll notice each and every one of those hands, each and every one of them come included with their own supplied pegs. This is something, again, I wish more companies could do more of because it just saves a lot less, saves a lot more of the hassle of taking the hands off, leaving the pegs still in their socket, and then trying to find something to take those pegs out. Often at times, I'll use just like a pair of pliers, for example, and I'll just pop that peg out. I'm glad that each one, though, of Sideshow's hands come included with their own supplied pegs. Additionally, if you feel your figure doesn't have enough Luke Cage to him, if you manage to pick up also the Sideshow exclusive, the exclusive also comes included, one of which unfortunately we won't be looking at in this review, with a pair of fists very similar to these ones that will actually have the brass knucks of Luke and Cage across the fronts. Again, a nice little added bonus if you manage to successfully pick up the very limited release a sideshow exclusive of Luke Cage that would have those as well. So we're going to go ahead and undress the figure once again, because personally, I'd like to keep him in his orange, I'm sorry, in his yellow shirt. We're going to go ahead and slide the jacket off. This is also a good opportunity for me to show you how easy it is to take the jacket off. Just going to keep continuing to slide off sleeve to sleeve to sleeve to sleeve till eventually you take the jacket right off. And again, this is the look that you get. And when, while we're also at it, before we've revisited the hands, I'm going to go ahead and take the gauntlets, the bracelets, and I'm going to slide those into place just because I think those look a lot cooler on Luke Cage. So let's say we are going to grab the gripping hand for the time being. This is going to come into play in a second. And we're also going to grab, we're also going to grab this hand here, slide that into place. We will go ahead and take the figure's head off. And the only reasoning for why we're doing that is we're gonna take the chain. Now this again, this chain can fit over top of, let me just show you here, let me just show you. You can take this chain, this will easily fit over Luke Cage's head. You really don't need to take the head off. If however, you do wanna display the Luke Cage necklace, uh, again, it does. I, I suppose it does fit over his head as is. I just found it was a lot easier just to take the head off so it wasn't running the risk of sliding across the painted heads here because the last thing I certainly would want to do is damage or disrupt the paint job that they've done. It's such a good looking paint job. We want to run the risk of damaging that. So it does seem like you can actually drape both chains, both necklaces over Luke Cage's somewhat slightly larger head. And then we have the look that we're Prefer, that I would prefer to go with. I just think that this is again more iconic for Luke Cage. And again, the only thing then missing is the larger chain. And we didn't really talk too much about this. I really did want to leave this till near the, the later end of the review. This is a real chain. It is definitely have a metal weight to it. I'm glad that they went the route of using metal and not simply plastic. As you can see, 
I mean, they are identical to one another, continued their ways, looped and connected to one another until a fully realized chain was in place here. I do like that it's got a good significant amount of length to it as well. It's not a short uh, chain. So one good thing about it is if you do put it in his hand, you can drape it off and you still have a lot of excess to work with. Like I love the fact that it would just drape off, just flow off from his hand. And again, you can have Luke Cage displayed with the chain in his hands. Here's what the figure looks like when you get the chains in his hand. One thing I would recommend though, is if you are putting the chains in his hand, at least the grabbing hand, I find it was actually a lot easier to take the hand out of the socket first, pry the fingers away, run the chain through it, and then plop it, plunk it back into its socket. The other hand actually isn't really so much gripping the chain as it's just, the chain is just draping over top of it. Again, it, it's okay, this specific hand, but it has a very irregular cup shape to it. Rather instead, I would keep the chain still gripping in his one hand, and I would actually even entertain the idea of taking this hand out. Let's go ahead and do that right now. And replace it. Let's find the proper hand here. Replace it actually with one of the dynamic hands. I think it actually just looks a little bit more aggressive in all honesty. And then we can go ahead and take the chain, run it through his hand. And again, you've got this look. Now, while the figure is standing there, the weight of the chain actually does make him a little too front heavy, but if you get the stance just right, and of course making use of the stand that we looked at earlier, you shouldn't have any problems with the figure toppling over. Again, I just want to show you the comparison between the two hands. Granted, yes, this one is now on this side. This would be this one on this side. This one, again, is just like almost a perfect 90 degree angle. And this one here is just more like the spread fingers dynamic pose. I personally like this look with the spread fingers rather than the cupped hand myself. But again, this is, I think, what they had intended for if you want to display the figure with the chain. Again, I don't personally like this hand as much as I do like more the gripping hand, the dynamic hand myself, as a way to display the figure. In fact, I like those dynamic hands so much, I just decided to keep both of them in the sockets for final looks here, or not quite final looks, but certainly posability on this guy, which is the following. So we've already established that his head rotates all the way around. It actually rotates as just more so spinning around this, this cup socket that sits atop of the ball joint. It does have its own posability by only the virtue of, well, it's, it's basically like, like I said, a cup that's sitting on top of the ball joint. That spins, and then you've got a secondary ball joint right at the base of the neck. You'll also notice, too, that the neck is made of a more softer rubber material. Again, we'll just put the head back in place. The head moves up and down, left and right, slightly angled back and left and right. And again, you can rotate the head all the way around. The upper torso does have a crunch and you can rotate this back and forth. The waist also has a rotation back and forth as well. And there goes one of the arms, one of the hands. The arms hinge outward on both sides and you can bring the arm forward, you can bring the arm back. Both of the arms also do have, let me just lift the arm up here. They do have a swivel, but it's actually a swivel. The bicep, if I can show you here, the bicep is actually one piece to the shoulder. So it doesn't swivel up here. Instead, rather, it swivels up here, if that makes any sense. The elbows do hinge back and forth, and the arms do rotate all the way around. And depending on which hand, even though one hand just popped out, let's put the other hand in there. There we go. Any one of the hands rotate all the way around, and they have their own independent hinge back and forth. For his legs, Luke Cage splits the legs to about, about there. This one leg seems to hinge out a little bit more than this one right here. It's just a case I believe it's just a little more stiff on this one side. The legs do also have a swivel at the top cut of the thigh. Swivels right there. Has a double hinge on the knee. And then when we get down to the feet, something to discuss here. The feet do have a swivel back and forth. Often at times, though, when I am rotating the boots, there's a close -up, closer look at the boots. Nice done, by the way, on the laces. When I do swivel the feet back and forth, I do find that the ball joint pops off. That only happens when I am rotating the feet. The boots, the top portion of the boots, feel like they are like a more rubbery plastic. Um, that carries its way all the way down, so it's probably a case where you've got a 
firmly planted plastic socket right there that the ball joint's going to sit into. And then everything else around is sort of like softer material. Again, when you do rotate the, the feet, there it goes again, the, uh, the feet do pop out sometimes from their supplied ball joint. But again, that's a very small, small thing. It's only going to be the case when you are rotating the feet back and forth. But overall, again, a really nice looking Luke Cage. I've already managed to have a look already on this channel at the Sideshow Collectibles Daredevil six scale figure. And if you already have that figure, this now Luke Cage goes very well along with that figure in your collection. I always like when companies like Sideshow Collectibles delves into the realms of comic designed characters rather than always the more realistic versions. Luke Cage here is a good accompanying piece to the existing Sideshow Collectibles Daredevil, which we've also looked at on this channel, that also had his roots more firmly planted in the comic realms than it was in the realistic realms. This one does have some nice interchangeable options, some swap out options, depending on how you want to display the figure. Ultimately, I think in final looks is how I'm going to be displaying the figure, just shy of maybe changing out the pose here and there. I like the idea of having the chain in his hand, and I think I would probably leave the jacket off. That's just my own personal preference. Unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to get the deluxe the exclusive version of Luke Cage, which also came included with the brass knucks for Luke and Cage. That's also a good way, a great way that you could have displayed the figure. Either way, if you guys are interested in picking this one up for yourself, now here is some sad news. Sad news in the fact that if you guys are looking to jump on board and get Luke Cage now, he is limited to 500 pieces worldwide. Sideshow Collectibles still has this guy in stock for $230, but again, limited quantities of 500, I'm sure he's going to be selling out really, really fast. $230 isn't so bad for all the stuff that you're getting with it. Like I said, you get the jacket, the chains, the necklace, you get the glasses, which again, a little on the sensitive, fragile side. You'd have to be very, very careful when handling those glasses. But again, there's enough going for Luke Cage that I think he's worth picking up, especially if you're more into the comic design characters than, say, like their more realistic counterparts. Again, if you are interested in picking this one up for yourself, head on over to Sideshow Collectibles. It is still in stock, but it's a very limited quantity. If $230, by the way, seems a little too high, you can also use set up a payment plan on this guy. And I think the payment plan currently for him is 103. It's about a hundred, just a little over a hundred dollars a month. So you can pretty much split the cost of this guy almost in half, pay for half of him on one month, the other half on the following month, and then Luke Cage will be delivered right to your door. Today we were having a look though at the Sideshow Collectibles. This was the Luke Cage six scale figure. This was, by the way, the standard release, and the standard release did not come included with the brass knuckles for his fists. If you guys want to go back and have a look, like I said, I did do the review of the comic-themed Daredevil, and also just recently, I also had a look at the comic-themed Batman, all of which came from the folks over at Sideshow Collectibles. So if again, if you guys are interested in checking out those older reviews, why not swing over to the Sideshow playlist? And you can check out all the stuff that uh, I've looked at up to this point. Again, a big thank you to the folks over at Sideshow for making this review possible, for sending this sample my way. And then make sure as well, guys, you hit that little subscribe button that's just below this video. More reviews like this will be coming soon, so stay tuned for that. And thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.